Good evening, everyone. I'm seeing the attendees flooding in. It's very exciting to have everyone here. Konbanwa. Hi, minasan konbanwa. Good evening to everyone joining us. Hi, Kombawa. Wow, that's wonderful. Hi, Kombawa, Minasan. So once again, uh, good evening to uh, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, online today for the Gateway to Fujitsu webinar. Um, before I get started, just a, a small note. Some of you may have heard about it or read about it in the news, but 2022 is a very special year for us because it marks 70 years of diplomatic relations between Japan and India, which uh, we've all been celebrating. And uh, the consulate of Japan uh, in, in Chennai, for example, has been uh, conducting an event and it's really, really fantastic. And uh, on that note, we've got a great number of attendees joining us today and it's fantastic, I'd like to thank, for the future of Indian-Japan relations. So, uh, thank you so much for joining. Um, in that context, uh, I'm happy to announce that Fujitsu and uh, Hayakawa uh, School have entered into a partnership. So that's why we're really excited today to have our panelists uh, talk about employment opportunities with the Japanese IT giant Fujitsu. So um, once again, thank you so much for joining. Um, We'll slowly uh, get rolling with the uh, event. Uh, I hope our attendees are all joining us. Uh, we're also live in YouTube. And a gentle reminder to all of the participants, um, if you have any questions, I'm sure you will uh, as we proceed with the event, you can post them in the Q&A section of the Zoom application. If you're joining us in YouTube, you can post it in the live chat and uh, I will try to keep track and then we will uh, bring up your questions later with the panelists. So uh, this is just so we can keep it a bit organized and so I don't miss any really important questions. So please do make a note and uh, put it into the Q&A or the live chat of YouTube. All right, once again, thank you for joining us and a great evening. Um, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Shimizu Sensei uh, of Hayakawa to give a small introduction to uh, Hayakawa Japanese uh, School. Hi, Shimizu Sensei, dozo. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening, everybody. Hi, Minasan, Konbanwa. Hi. Uh, on behalf of Hayakawa Japanese Language School and Cultural Center, extend a warm welcome to Fujitsu and students who are joining this seminar, Gateway to Fujitsu. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to announce that we, Hayakawa and Fujitsu, are collaborating and conducting this seminar to introduce about Fujitsu and how important uh, the Japanese skill for their works. Uh, Fujitsu has same name with the most biggest mountain in Japan called Mount Fuji and they are the most biggest IT company in Japan. And their great history and amazing works will be given by Fujitsu shortly. Uh, let me also to introduce about Hayakawa. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, can I share uh, my PPT? I'm sorry. Uh, this yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. 
So, Hayakawa Japanese Language School and Culture Center has been conducting、uh, Japanese classes in Chennai for the past 17 years. And from 2020, during the pandemic here,、uh, we are conducting online Japanese classes for all levels. And last year itself, more than 1,400 students are joining us. So, our main activity is here. So, we are teaching, also, we are doing translation, interpretation, job posting for students. We have Original designed course which is covered the syllabus for JLPT, BJT, etc. And we are focusing more communicative Japanese and distance covering、uh, reading, typing, listening, and speaking. So we have the same type of online test also. So,、uh, we have original textbook for beginner to intermediate, which are designed for Indian students. Uh, and all c o u r s e s of our courses are available for online. Students can join any place in the world. We are supporting the students not only classes. But also materials, recorded videos, online tests, and culture events. Speaking about our students' statistics, many of our students have engineering background, especially IT. So, in this regard, we are very happy to have the great opportunity to introduce about Fujitsu. Hope Everybody g e t valuable information, and this,、uh, this event becomes the first step of your bright future. Finally, we are Hayakao Japanese Language School are grateful for your presence at this event and request you continue support in our all future endeavors. Arigato gozaimashita. はい、ありがとうございます。清水先生。Thank you so much.、Um, so, uh, as uh, Sensei was saying,、uh, we are、uh, very happy to have、uh, this event happen、um, as a connect between Hayakawa Japanese Language,、uh, and Cultural Center, Language School and Cultural Center and、uh, Fujitsu. And、uh, so, on that note, we're going to be having a couple of panelists speak to all of us today about Fujitsu. And about the importance of Japanese language in their work, in their work experience, and what that can mean for all of you who are looking, to,、um, looking for this kind of job opportunity.、Um, uh, I'll just give a quick introduction uh, to, uh, uh, to just tell everybody a little bit about our panelists today, and then、uh, I'll hand it over to them and they can share their knowledge、uh, and their information with us. So, today we have、uh, two uh, panelists who will be speaking to us,、uh, Ms. Ashwini Gupte,、uh, as well as Mr. Prashant Kulkarni.、Uh, so, I'll just introduce them、uh, one by one. Ashwini san is a part of One Asia Global Delivery Center at Fujitsu, also called GDC for short. She is the delivery head for multi cloud services and business process services for Japan and Asia. And manages a multi million dollar portfolio across GDC. She has advanced certification in Japanese language, a skill which has enabled her to work with Japanese engineers and the senior management at Fujitsu Japan. Ashwini san has over 25 years of experience in the product development and software industry, is an expert in telecom and networking, and has been the recipient of numerous awards, including Fujitsu Quality Achievement Awards, as well as project awards like the Fujitsu President Award. The Japanese BTS project. 
So Ashwini-san is also a part of GEN, Gender Empowerment Network at Fujitsu, and is a strong advocate of diversity and inclusion at the workplace, as well as for women being in the STEM fields like science, technology, engineering, and math. So we're very, very excited and happy to have Ashwini-san here today. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Ashwini-san. Thank you. And, uh, uh, and we also have Prashant-san. Prashant-san is a part of Fujitsu Global Delivery Organization. He is the department unit head with the One Asia team of the India Global Delivery Center, GDC. Prashant-san is a Japanese-speaking bilingual business leader with over 21 years of experience in the ITES industry. Of those 21 years, he has in the last 10 years been in strategic and leadership roles. As a department unit head, Prashant-san is responsible for managing cost, quality, and delivery for accounts from One Asia region, delivering project, projects into Japan. His extensive experience working with Japanese counterparts has contributed significantly to the JGG, or Japan Global Gateway Program. In fact, prior to Fujitsu, uh, Prashant San was a director with NTT Data G, uh, GDC Center, where he gained a lot of experience working with Japanese customers. So Prashant San began his career with Japanese companies, India Development Centers, and has over 15 years transformed into a global business leader. So uh, once again, uh, thank you so much, Prashant San, for joining us today. Uh, both Ashwini San and Prashant San have had so much experience in this field, and um, we have really excellent people uh, to talk to us. Um, and before we get started, I just wanted to quickly ask the panelists if we can get together for a quick photograph um, and then, you know, get started with the event. Is that all right? I'll just uh, request everyone to turn on their videos and we can take a photograph of everyone together. Uh, Mitalisa, would you like to? Yeah, I clicked a picture. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Arigato gozaimasu. Uh, so without further ado, uh, I invite the panelists to speak to the audience. Thank you, uh, Anuja San, and thank you, Hayakawa, for giving us this opportunity to interact with students and also professionals who are working for Japan and otherwise. And thank you very much, everybody. I see many people have joined and enthusiastic response. Thank you very much for that, Kumbawa. So we will uh, give you some introduction on Fujitsu and take you through what we are doing and how bilinguals can definitely add uh, value to our Fujitsu business and can how can we collaborate with Hayakawa. So let me share my screen. Uh, so hope it is visible to everybody. Uh, if one of the panelists. Yes, Ashwani, sir. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, hi, it's perfectly visible, yes. Please go ahead. Just give me a second. Uh, I'll just do some adjustments on that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, everybody, once again. Uh, hope I'm audible. Uh, Anuja san has already given the introductions, uh, but let me just uh, say a few words about myself. Uh, I have done my master's of engineering uh, in electrical from government COEP. That's uh, one of the well-known college in uh, India. In fact, the very first engineering college in India. And when I was uh, working on my master's uh, dissertation and I was uh, studying at college, our college got aid from Japan, and that was the starting point for me. It actually uh, motivated me to learn Japanese, and I came to know that Japan is quite advanced country in technology, and I thought that I should start learning Japanese. I enrolled myself for Japanese language courses at Pune University, uh, so I did my advanced diploma in Japanese language. I also could do my N2 certification uh, in Japanese, and that helped me a lot throughout my career. 
So I started my software industry career with a company, uh, Fujitsu ICIM, that was a partner company uh, with Fujitsu, which is now called as Insar Technologies and got uh, a great experience of working with Japan and especially with Fujitsu. So almost for 10 years, I was working with Fujitsu on various projects. I used to go to Japan, interact with uh, Japan teams, senior leadership over there, engineers in Japanese, and that helped me a lot uh, to advance my career. After that, I joined uh, outsourced product development company in India, which is Persistent Systems Limited. Uh, they have also offices worldwide. And most of the business was with uh, Europe and Americas. Uh, and I could also get some business for Japan. Uh, so those 12 years were mostly on the product development, product life cycle. And now I'm back to Fujitsu. Uh, proudly, I can say I'm employee of Fujitsu for last five years. I'm part of India Global Development Center of Fujitsu. That's a brief on me. Uh, I would request Prashant San uh, to give his introduction. Hey, hi, uh, Kumbhava. Am I audible? Am I visible, Ashwini? Yes, you're audible. Okay, great. So I think uh, we, we already had a uh, good introduction for us from Anuja, but I'll just uh, try and cover some points uh, uh, for myself as introduction. So I've done my bachelor's and uh, master's from Pune University in computer sciences. Uh, I remember back then uh, we did not have the uh, software industry open to, you know, providing technical uh, trainings to people. So there was a famous DAC course from CDAC and uh, people from my generation actually used to do it to get an entry into software industry. Uh, so I have done that uh, post-graduation diploma in advanced computing from CDAC. Post that I uh, happened to incidentally join a company which was based out of uh, Japan. They had their uh, development office here in Pune. Uh, until then, I think I did not have any connection with Japan. Once I entered this company called NSS, uh, it's a Pune-based company. Uh, slowly and steadily, I started uh, getting uh, my interactions with Japan, my interactions with Japanese culture, and that's how uh, I started my Japanese. Uh, they had some, they had brought in some teachers to help us with our uh, hiragana and katakana and kanjis. But uh, yeah, I think uh, we have a tough time learning that because probably. Uh, it was it was a very new thing for all of us. Uh, post that, I had a chance to go to Japan, stay in Japan, and that is where I started learning Japanese. Um, I happened to uh, uh, I, ha I, I had the privilege of staying in Japan for more than ten years. Uh, there, I could work for probably uh, one of the biggest uh, IT service uh, provider out of uh, uh, Japan, NTD Data. I learned how to do. Uh, software integrations. I learned how the market works in Japan. I learned uh, the commercials uh, for, 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 for any software product, any software project in Japan. Uh, post that, I happened to come back to India, kept on working with NTD Data. For the last uh, two and a half years, I'm working with Fujitsu. Uh, Fujitsu is a great place to be. It has further enhanced my career. Uh, in our talk, we'll also guide you through uh, the opportunities, the kind of work that we do at Fujitsu uh, and where all the opportunities are present for everyone uh, listening on this call. Uh, apart from all this work and study, I'm a sports enthusiast. Uh, I love playing cricket still. I'm associated with uh, clubs in Pune. We have our corporate tournaments. We have our uh, non-corporate tournaments in uh, Pune. I, I, I happen to attend that on, on weekends. Uh, that's how I keep myself uh, away from work uh, in the leisure time uh, and then get charged up back on to Mondays. So a brief introduction on to me. Uh, I'll, I'll talk in subsequent slide. I give it back to Ashwini for her part of uh, explanation. Ashwini. Thank you, Prashant San. Uh, so I shall go to the next slide. Uh... So who we are, we are Fujitsu. So some facts, figures about Fujitsu. Uh, so we are number one company in Japan, uh, number one information and communications technology company in Japan. Worldwide, we are at eighth rank and we are eighth largest IT service provider uh, in that. Uh, Fujitsu Group pro proactively contributes to sustainable development goals. So in my subsequent slides, I'll be speaking more about this, about, so we are committed to sustainable development. 
we are a team over 129,000. Uh, our Fujitsu colleagues uh, are worldwide and uh, we serve our customers in 180 countries. This is uh, what we call as Fujitsu way of working. Uh, so our vision is our responsibility as one of the world's largest companies is to help build a better future for the society. So our values, what are our values? We are employee-centric company. We are customer-centric company. Uh, we are business partner-centric company. So we are business partners, vendors who work with us and uh, we also value them, uh, value their contribution. We are technology-centric company. Uh, we use technology uh, for our uh, society. And uh, we are a Japanese company. Uh, so we have offices worldwide, but our headquarters are in Japan and our DNA is Japanese. So we are very, very much quality focused. What are our principles? So global citizenship, customer-centric perspective, uh, then uh, first and understanding uh, spirit of challenge, speed and agility. Uh, so all that flexibility and the way we uh, respond to our customers, uh, very quick responses. Uh, we are flexible to work with our customers, serve their, uh, them, uh, understand their requirements and we believe in teamwork as uh, Fujitsu. As Fujitsu uh, code of conduct, you can see number of things listed over here. So we respect the human rights. We comply with all laws and regulations. We uh, believe in 100% compliances uh, in all the countries where we work in for all the countries where we serve our customers. We act with fairness uh, in our business dealings, uh, very just and fair uh, business dealings we have. We protect and respect intellectual property. Uh, we maintain confidentiality, uh, which is required, and uh, we do not use our position in our organization for personal gain. So these are very important things, and we are abiding ourselves by this code of conduct. Some awards and accolades for Fujitsu. Uh, so I, I probably I'll be repeating this word, sustainability development, and how we are committed to sustainability. So Dow Jones sustainability indi indices. These are some uh, indices which are used to evaluate sustainability performance of companies. I'm sure some of you would have heard this word sustainability. So today, many companies and almost all companies are talking of this, how we can uh, preserve our natural resources uh, for our future and how we can run some projects which will help us uh, doing this and how in a way we are committed to the future of society. That's what is uh, depicted by this word sustainability. You may uh, go to uh, United Nations site and uh, read more about this. Uh, other performance index for companies is CDP. Uh, that's a carbon disclosure project and which is non-profitable -prof organization. And this organization is again across various countries and they also do some uh, assessments, performance uh, indices are published by them uh, for the companies, uh, how they are working on these sustainability projects and for uh, climate change and water security, uh, we have got the highest ratings. Uh, so you can see uh, we are on a list of uh, CDP. So we have got highest ratings in these surveys. This is our Fujitsu technology and service vision. So we are a services company. We also uh, do some product development. Uh, along with that, we are definitely a technology company. So what is Fujitsu's vision? Transform from an IT company to DX company. So DX is again today a keyword and many companies say that they do DX, what is DX? It's a digital transformation. So it's a clear mission of transforming into a digital uh, tra transformation company, but always we uh, are doing this in the context of making the world more sustainable and for the better future of society. Uh, that's our uh, focus. So you can see uh, what is our purpose. And uh, I talked about Fujitsu Bay. So to make the world more sustainable by building trust in society through innovation, that's our vision. So more about this that uh, make the world more sustainable, uh, have some uh, projects, uh, then initiatives to for the better future of society at the same time, build that trust in society and that through innovation. So innovation is nothing but uh, 
new ideas should come up so we we want to uh, do away with our uh, regular default things but come up with new ideas innovations uh, technology innovations and uh, do all this sustainability development through that that's our motto and that's our vision something more about uh, on these sustainable goals so united nations they have defined 17 uh, sustainable uh, development goals which are called as sdgs and you can see those uh, 17 uh, goals defined here and we are also aligned with these uh, so we, you can see that uh, uh, we are aligned to uh, sdg uh, to then some some more sdgs you can see those on the right hand side And uh, we do have some sustainable development tribes, what we call some groups within our company where you can enroll uh, as employees, we can enroll and we also do uh, some work in that. We uh, run some projects, we uh, work on the education, we work with some uh, NGOs, uh, which help, uh, you know, uh, to eradicate hunger and poverty. Uh, we also work with some industrial organizations on the industrial association innovation. These are again uh, technologies uh, supporting key focus areas for us. Uh, so some verticals, uh, sustainable manufacturing, consumer experience, healthy living and uh, trusted society. Horizontal areas, we talked about digital transformation. So how a digital shift can happen. Uh, so from typically from a manual way of working, how uh, automations can be used and how uh, some uh, manual ways of working can be uh, transformed into digital ways of working. Uh, we also work on the business applications uh, in various domains as retail, banking, healthcare, uh, so and so forth, manufacturing, and uh, hybrid IT. That's one area. Uh, so you, most of you must have heard about cloud security. Uh, so we also work on hybrid IT and multi-cloud environments. Uh, we do have our own data centers and uh, we provide cloud services uh, to our worldwide customers. Key technologies on which we are working and some advanced technologies uh, you will see mentioned here. Um, so AI, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, networking. So we, we are also working on some 5G initiatives. Uh, that's, that's today everywhere. Uh, companies are going for 5G network uh, for the speed and uh, better uh, media transportation. We also work on the data and security, so data analytics as well as security. We work on uh, computing. We have high computing uh, devices. We have uh, programs developed for that and also on the converging technologies. So this is our, again, uh, technology vision and technology focus areas. I'll go to the next slide. Uh, I'll talk about some numbers, uh, how we are uh, placed uh, on the revenue. Uh, so some numbers uh, for the last year, this year results are yet to come out. So on the device solutions, uh, that's out of our total revenue, 8% revenue uh, is coming from that, that is from the electronic component and semiconductor packaging, et cetera. On ubiquitous solutions, that is PCs, 8.6% uh, of the PC servers. On the technology solutions and services, uh, that's our prime area uh, where we are placed as 83.4% uh, revenue comes from that. And these are the solutions and services we are providing to our customers. Uh, we work on the system platforms. As I said, we work on the cloud uh, platforms. Uh, we also provide services in those areas. And uh, we also work for other international regions along with Japan. Uh, that's how these are the revenue, revenue figures and uh, distribution. Some more revenue figures by the region. As I said, uh, Japan, yes, we are largest in Japan and most of our revenue comes from uh, Japanese customers. But along with that, we also work in other countries and other regions. So we work for Oceania, we work for Asia, that is Singapore, Thailand, uh, Philippines. We work for Americas and we work for EMEA. Uh, so in EMEA, we work for Central Europe countries and customers and also North, Northwestern Europe countries and customers. 
and some other countries. So just to give you some idea on revenue figures and how we are placed. So you can see the largest share of revenue is coming from Japan. This is how we are placed uh, worldwide in uh, worldwide IT services market. So we are at eighth rank. So you can see uh, TCS is the probably the largest IT provider in India. We are almost comparable with TCS, just to give an idea. And we are number one in uh, Japan IT services market. So Fujitsu has the highest uh, share in Japan services market, followed by NTT Data, NEC, Hitachi, IBM, and other companies. So as I said, uh, approximately 129,000 Fujitsu colleagues are working uh, for the customers across 180 countries. And these are the regions how our headcount is distributed across regions. So highest headcount in Japan, followed by EMEA, uh, followed by Asia and then Americas and Oceania. So this is how uh, our workforce is distributed across regions and territories. And uh, coming to now uh, FCIPL or India GDC. So what are we? We are uh, global delivery centers. So we have regions, uh, they are primarily working with uh, customers. They, uh, they have sales uh, teams, uh, which go to our customers, get the business. And that business is then uh, executed from regions as well as from global delivery centers. So we have almost eight countries where global delivery centers are there. And we, we do a very prime work uh, for our regions and Fujitsu. So uh, what, what we do at global delivery centers, as I said that uh, we are a part of Fujitsu's global strategy. Of course, we, are, uh, we do a very niche and important work from global delivery centers across eight countries and we provide services to our end customers through our regions. Uh, though we are at eight physical sites, ultimately our headquarters is in Japan, it's uh, virtual, I can say. And we also work uh, together as though it's eight countries, we collaborate, we standardize and we connect and we work together. So we have uh, guidelines uh, on which uh, our deliveries are based, our standardized deliveries are based. So though we are divided into eight countries physically, it's nothing but totally we are together, we are one team working for Fujitsu customers. So uh, this will give you uh, some picture on uh, countries where we have global delivery centers. We at India are the largest uh, GDC, what we call global delivery center, and uh, followed by uh, then Philippines, uh, Russia, China, Malaysia, Costa Rica. And we do a lot of work from GDCs from India itself. Uh, we work on uh, multi-cloud services. We work on application services. We work on business process services. So Prashant San will take you through all this uh, in subsequent slides. So Prashant San, I would hand it over to you uh, to give the details of India GDC and what, we, what work we do from India primarily. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwini. Okay. Uh, so I think until here, what we saw is uh, how we are placed globally uh, at our overall Fujitsu level, uh, the 129,000 employees that we have worldwide, starting from uh, America, Europe, uh, going into Asia and also Japan and how Japan is probably the uh, biggest strength, uh, biggest market that we have. Uh, post that, Ashwini also ran us through our key principles. Uh, what are our guiding principles to doing any business? It is not that we just pick up any project and start working on it. Uh, there are very, very specific uh, principles that we work on. Sustainability is an important part uh, for all our projects. There is a, a, a thought for future, a thought for the generations that are going to come by. And what we as, you know, the previous generation are going to leave for them important part of every project that we do post that uh, Ashwini also uh, talk more about GDCs and how does this GDC work. Uh, 
so if you look at if you look at the overall picture what we want to convey here is uh, the way we are structured today at fujitsu uh, most of our customers come from either america europe uh, australia oceania countries and but obviously asia and japan countries uh, we have our primary offices here who look after uh, the projects that can be had from these customers these projects are then you know actually transferred to the gdcs or the development centers that we have across asia we also have development centers in europe we have development centers uh, in americas uh, depending upon the needs of customer depending upon the gdc specific specialty the gdc specific strength uh, the work is distributed across uh, and then uh, the projects actually start uh, uh, so that's where uh, we also covered which all gdcs do we have across the world and now we will talk specifically about india gdc uh, this is the gdc uh, where me and ashwini uh, and other panelists work today uh, this is the gdc where uh, we actually are serving customers uh, for all the regions and we'll look at uh, what we have uh, the strengths here what we do what kind of work uh, we do uh, i'll take you into the details of kind of projects the kind of technologies that we have uh, and then we'll we'll subsequently uh, also look uh, as to what kind of openings and opportunities that we have uh, for all of us uh, next slide please okay so if we if we look at india gdc we have actually five uh, centers uh, pan india today uh, we have pune as our biggest center uh, followed by uh, chennai then we have a bangalore center we have a hyderabad and a noida center so total five centers across which the entire india gdc strength uh, is distributed which is roughly around 6000 plus people today uh, uh if you look at all these centers then as i said we serve uh, european customers we serve uh, asian customers we serve japanese customers we also serve australian customers so all the regions that fujitsu works uh, for its end customers are covered out of india gdc uh, specifically talking about one asia the team where me and uh, uh, the other team members belong uh, we we are today mostly distributed across pune chennai and bangalore as our centers Uh, we have our highest count in pune followed by chennai and then bangalore bangalore is a upcoming center for us when i say for us here i mean mean one asia that is the team that serves customers in uh, asia region and japan region uh what we serve we serve 200 plus uh, customers today uh, we have uh, infra related work we have uh, uh, development related work we have sap related work salesforce related work Uh, uh if you look at services uh, we serve dx we serve amcs bps i'll cover i'll cover what what are these you know uh, acronyms in my subsequent slides uh what benefits we we bring to customer so probably people look at when people look at offshore centers people look at cost first but probably we at fujitsu think over cost i mean cost is a inherent uh, advantage that all gdcs have not only india philippines has a cost advantage today Malaysia has a cost advantage. Probably every Asian country has a cost advantage today. So that's a that's probably a common benefit that all GDCs can offer to customers. But uh, cost is not everything. I think uh, our more focus parameters always have been and will be in future, which are quality and delivery. Uh, Japanese uh, uh, market uh, as such has been always very quality sensitive. Uh, quality is imbibed into all our projects, into all our members, and then the on time. uh 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 principle that uh, japanese people follow is also a part of our delivery so we believe in quality and delivery and we then give out the cost advantage we always have this uh, vision of what we can bring in as a value to customer and value to customer does not always have to be you know uh, a commercial value to customer probably india has far more things to give to the world than only you know the cost advantage if we look at if we look at our strength uh, we have we probably are one of the nations who is who is able to serve uh, customers in every domain so why cost be the only thing so even in fujitsu we have we have projects which are running on ai we have projects which are running on uh, artificial intelligence machine learning we have uh, blockchain initiatives that have started uh, we certainly have financial domains and banks that are supported we have large retail solutions that we support so there is lot more to offer only only other than cost uh, 
to do all of this we certainly believe into standardization we certainly believe into uh, quality uh, cmmi uh, so we are cmmi l5 certified that brings in uh, a lot of value to our solutions to our customer uh, and that's how we today have been uh, into the industry for uh, more than uh, more than 10 years serving customers globally yeah next slide sure. okay so i mean we all we all follow mobile today we all follow the facebook and instagram and linkedin today so these are our uh, presence areas today we are on linkedin we are on facebook we are on instagram uh, we will see uh, hayaka institute also getting personally connected uh, with me and ashwini uh, so you can follow us there as well uh, uh, you can follow us on instagram as well and facebook as well depends on what you use as a mode of uh, your social handles today next slide okay so previous one. okay so here i want to talk a bit more into what are what are the solutions that we offer so if you look at if you look at uh, uh, the middle image uh, the first circle talks about all the uh, regions that we support the second sec uh, circle which talks about healthcare retail manufacturing talks about the uh, uh, domains the areas we are into and then the innermost circle talks about the technologies uh, as we say uh, that are offered from uh, uh, fujitsu india today so uh, if we if we look at it uh, from a holistic perspective we are we are present in public sector so public sector is basically uh, simply putting it uh, government projects uh, so we do government projects in japan we do government projects in america and other regions as well uh, we are we are present in healthcare healthcare is all about uh, the cosmetics uh, that we otherwise daily uh, use we are, uh, the medical services uh, that we have retail is more about you know these big chains uh, the coffee chains that we have the restaurant chains that we have uh, we have our solutions working for that manufacturing you cannot you cannot just miss that sector uh, japan probably uh, is, is was one of the biggest manufacturing hub earlier is one of the most uh, biggest semiconductor hub today uh, we are there we are there also into financial services so we have projects that are into insurance we have projects that are into agricultural insurance not only you know human insurance we have human and non human insurance uh, uh, sectors that we cover uh, we have banks that we cover uh, we have uh, some other financial institutions that we cover so we 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 cover the financial services sector totally innovative projects into mobility uh, something that is related to overall business that is related to not only cars but other forms of mobility uh, we have projects that are that are into these domains as well now talking of all of these domains uh, we we basically are a are a technology organization uh, what technologies do we use to you know actually cater to our customers uh, in all these domains those are the texts that you see outside the circle so i'll just run through that basically uh, applications multi cloud services uh, partner business solutions service integration cyber uh, security services dx services uh, and uh, wws i mean uh, yeah i mean these these are the terms that we use but if i try to break it down for you basically application and multi cloud services basically are the uh, the azures of the world today or the aws of the world today uh, it 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 covers uh, java c c++ uh, that we learn as our programming languages uh, it also covers something like uh, .net that we have today uh, it also covers the uh, the uh, i should say the advanced end which is the uh, uh, ai and the ml part today it also covers uh, the hybrid it part today it also covers something which is private cloud fujitsu has its own cloud has its own technologies and scripting that is around cloud so all that is collected into a, uh, a, 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 a i should say a, a horizontal or a category which is called application and multi cloud services now why have we categorized our businesses or our projects or our people uh, according to this uh, we we in india already are 6000 plus people worldwide we are 129000 people uh, uh, we we want specific domains we want specific uh, technologies we want specific uh, stress and focus to be given on specific projects and the technologies and but obviously our employees as well so 
every project that we do is either categorized into either of this six categories every person every employee that we have including me is categorized as a part of either of these six categories and that's how we bring in focus on to projects we bring in focus on to our employees uh, uh, we'll we'll see in subsequent slides probably we are one of the uh, 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 best uh, uh, companies to work for if you look at the longevity of employees working with us it's it's far higher than the industry standard today how do we bring in all of this we bring in all of this using these pillars for us these pillars bring in specific trainings to specific people and specific projects bring in specific quality norms to specific categories and that's how we ensure that the quality and delivery always stay ahead of us uh, talking of uh, partner business solutions if you are aware about the oracle solutions oracle enterprise solutions or the sap solutions uh, the service now uh, or for that matter, even the Microsoft Dynamics, if you have worked on, all of that is categorized today into a group which is called a part, partner business solution. Uh, this group specifically covers solutions which are from these uh, uh, suits, I should say, or enterprise applications, I should say, and then specifically cater to uh, the projects and the uh, uh, customers who are demanding solutions out of this. Uh, service integration talks about our service desk. We, we, we have service desk uh, solutions for us. We have a, a elaborate business process services for us. Now, believe me, business process services are not only the phone calls that we make to uh, say ICICI bank today or HDFC bank today. There is there is lot more to business process services. Probably one of the most technologically and uh, language wise challenging area that we have seen because it is about being 100% accurate. It is about being very specific on what language that is being used. It is always about cutting down the costs because it is a very low margin, high revenue area. So business, business process services is one thing that comes under service integration, service management as a whole. There are people with us who are project manager specific, uh, who can work across any domains, any services today. Uh, they are categorized under uh, PPMs today. DX services, Ashwini touched upon DX services in his part, uh, in her uh, in her part as well. We we do not want to remain an IT company. I mean, gone are the days when when companies were software or IT companies. It's about it's about uh, digital shift today, and digital shift is probably a big jargon today. But it is about bringing in uh, digital solutions. I mean, simply putting, bringing in digital solution in anything and everything that we do. So that's that's probably one of the basic guiding principle to all the solutions that we provide to our customers. Uh, that, uh, there is a separate vertical uh, that we have on DX services, which particularly look, to, look at solutioning, particularly look at immersive technologies, uh, data computing, big data, uh, blockchain, IoT, and AI. Uh, and uh, the, the SC that you see below each is basically the headcount that we have today. Uh, so our biggest area today of working is application and multi-cloud services. We have roughly 2,000 people working there. Cybersecurity services, I mean, I mean, with the advent of everything, probably that's one key area that we are looking at. Uh, we, we do not only have solutions that we implement in our projects, but we have solutions that are provided to our customers from uh, security services. Uh, and then the WW. So this is basically the overall area on which we work today. These are the uh, the the verticals that you can say, or the domains that we work on today. Uh, talking about uh, C, C++ or more common programming languages and techniques, I'll cover that in my subsequent slides. Ashwini, uh, okay. So till here, uh, if we look at uh, the way we have uh, divided the entire presentation, uh, we, we started with global Fujitsu, then we came to GDCs, then we talked about uh, India GDC, what does India GDC bring to it? And now we will talk specifically about uh, a unit under India GDC, which is a one Asia unit. Now, uh, all the teams uh, in Fujitsu today are named after the region that we serve. So since we are team one Asia, we serve the Asia region. Uh, which not only includes Japan, but it also includes uh, our customers from Philippines, our customers from Singapore, our customers from Thailand. So uh, that's the Team One Asia. Uh, team One Asia, we'll see in subsequent slides, actually is growing thick and fast. We have grown in terms of headcount by 100% uh, this year. Uh, 
uh, we are one of the uh, one of the biggest uh, teams that we have in uh, india gdc uh, and there are specific reasons to our growth and we are here to discuss those with you and then uh, chart out uh, uh, some of the opportunities that we have in team one asia next slide okay so as i mentioned there is a there is a specific reason for why we are growing today and uh, you would often hear these keywords uh, the jgg keyword or the uh, japan global gateway keyword now i want to spend a couple of minutes on this slide because probably this is the driving force for team one asia today uh, uh, i mean over 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 last many years uh, before all this offshoring began uh, it was only about near shoring it was only about uh, rapid action development teams it was all local to individual countries now what has happened is japan also being technologically very advanced has started with this uh, they identified people they identified companies they identified uh, uh, sister companies who can help them on specific areas and that's how they actually grew their roots across japan and probably then into europe and subsequently into other areas but what has happened in all of this growth is uh, if you look at fujitsu today or probably any big company today uh, outside india they have lot of lot of people who are local people they have lot of companies local companies or the vendors that we say today which are based out of uh, japan uh, now that is absolutely changing in fujitsu so if you look at uh, uh, if you look at the left side uh, uh, rectangle then the green part uh, is the part which is you know the local part today uh the the brown part is the part which is uh, the uh, development center part uh, there is a specific uh, vehicle tool utility which is called a jgg today with which we are trying to change this what we are trying to change is trying to change uh, the work uh, to be done not only locally into japan but to be outsourced uh, in a rigorous and a, a much more bigger volume manner to all the development centers. Now, when I say all the development centers, uh, the opportunity is there not only for India development center, but there is an equal opportunity for our uh, friends in Philippines, our friends in Malaysia, and our friends in China as well, because they as well serve Japan. So that's an opportunity, that's a vehicle with which we are changing the dynamics of the way. Uh, Fujitsu delivers its uh, services and solutions to uh, end customers in Asia. Uh, with this uh, particular vehicle, with this particular initiative, we have seen that we are growing leaps and bounds. Uh, it will be there in subsequent slides. We were uh, 1,200 people to start uh, in uh, FI20, uh, which is April of last year. We have already grown by the same number. So uh, we, have, we have crossed the 2,100 figure and the latest figure uh, as of Feb end uh, or mid March is already 2400. So we have grown by 100% uh, thanks to this vision, this idea with which we are trying to serve global customers from GDCs. Uh, so that's 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 the force. That's the uh, uh, biggest impact uh, creating thing that we have in Fujitsu today. The JGG vision. Next slide, please. Now, uh, let me go go a further uh, step into, I mean, why this is changing. Uh, somebody may believe that, okay, you are moving uh, projects from probably Japan to India because you want, again, a cost advantage or all the technological advance, uh, 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 advantage that we just talked about. But there is an inherent problem today with, uh, uh, unfortunately, with Japan. Uh, that is uh, the society that we have there, the population demographics of Japan actually are at a stage where uh, if you if you look at the graphs on the left and a graph on the right, they are completely opposite graphs today. The graph on the left is the Japan graph, the graph on the right is the India graph. Now, what are population demographics? It is basically a statistical analysis of how the population is distributed across language, across age, across ethnicity, across multiple other parameters. I have picked up the age parameter here specifically because that is critical to our business. Uh, if you look at if you look at the age uh, distribution of population on Japan side, you will notice that uh, it it gradually increases from the zero bar, and then it suddenly increases post the forty bar, and then there is further increase as you go into sixties. 
so what does this mean this means that it's a aging population today you have more people who are aging faster than the number of people who are you know uh, getting born in japan who are you know younger hands in japan who will be able to actually work for future for the same customs now this is one thing which probably nobody can change within a year or two and this will have to be accepted as a demographic of any country any society and there will have to be adjustment that has to be done because customers are critical businesses are critical and that's where the 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 india story piece comes into picture where if you see it's exactly opposite to the japan graph in which you have maximum number of people who are into the age of 0 to 4 so probably we i mean people who are hearing this webinar today i assume that all are in their 20s we are into our 40s there is a bigger population out there which is the next generation which is going to come and probably take our jobs when we are going to grow old so that story for india actually uh, enables us as a fujitsu as a organization to start moving a lot of work to india getting india prepared for taking up those jobs which probably otherwise uh, are going to fall short of hands uh, probably in some months in some years and in some decades in japan uh, this is probably one of the biggest reason where we are seeing a lot of a uh, lot of shift from japan to india uh, all the people here the hayakawa students here the professionals here this is a big opportunity for you big opportunity for everyone uh, learning japanese today uh, learning technology today because this this trend is something which is here to stay for some more years and we will be taking advantage as a company of this trend and ensuring that we as india gdc and specifically we as team one asia will further propel our growth into this year and into subsequent years as well so this is what is driving uh, force another i mean uh, probably a natural driving force for us other than the india advantage of cost technology our youth ashwini uh, next slide please okay so talking about one asia we 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 said that we are a team of one asia if you look at the graph on the right side that is how our headcount is changing look at april and look at february uh, this this month we are we have even grown to 2400 now so we began our journey of this year at 1268 we are 2400 and we are out there to add some more thousands into subsequent years uh, if you look at uh, uh, the bilingual count that we have out of 2940 are bilingual so probably we maintain a ratio of 50% bilinguals now these bilinguals could be anybody who who can talk japanese who can read japanese who can both talk and read japanese we also have developers uh, who are who have japanese skills where they actually directly communicate with the customers directly communicate with our offices in japan talk to them on the requirements on the design uh, have a one to one communication and then guide teams here so there is a a, a bilingual proportion that we carry uh as i said earlier if you look at our attrition numbers which we have specifically kept here they are just 16% if you look at the industry today the industry today stands at 30 to 35% and worse numbers that you will see in bigger organizations have already touched 40% uh that 40% and we standing at 60% is lesser than half because we believe we believe employees are our assets we actually invest into them and employees today actually uh, uh, feel that they actually reciprocate to it there are fewer people than industry who leave fujitsu uh khakshin uh ashwini talked about innovation uh, that's probably one of one of the most important part uh, of our uh, growth uh, we specifically have programs in uh, fujitsu and uh, uh, to to actually support this innovation now what is innovation i mean innovation every time does not have to be you know somebody uh, creating something which is not there in the world it could be those small adjustments that we are doing in our projects it could be those small modules that we are bringing in our projects which is actually cutting down cost which is cutting down time which could be enhancing quality which could be making things look beautiful the ui ux part it could be probably a new product which is out there but not used in fujitsu everything is a kakshin for us so kakshin is basically that extension that innovation which we bring bring in our project and that innovation actually propels uh, uh, either better cost better quality or better delivery for us so there is a entire team uh, 
all employees in Fujitsu actually submit their khakshins, as we say, or submit their innovations. Uh, those innovations are interviewed. Uh, the, the, the innovation is then selected, and that's how the person is uh, the person or the solution is nominated or selected for a khakshin. So our team has done already done 19 khakshins this year. We have 178 projects. Uh, if you look at our revenue achievement, we are doing fantastic there. We have crossed our targets. We are in fact 21% over our targets. We serve seven countries. This include Asia and Japan. NPS. Uh, simply putting it is net promoter score, a, a difficult term to understand it, not, not a very common term, but it is uh, the, the customer belief in us, the customer satisfaction in us. Uh, we, we are doing fantastic there. Our customer satisfaction indices are above 100% today. Uh, customers actually are happy with the way we work. Uh, and it does not come automatically. I mean, probably that's the, that's the last result. Uh, I mean, it's just a number there. Uh, what goes into that is the entire process uh, that we follow, the, the, the quality specific processes that we have, the team trainings that we have, uh, the technological reviews that we have, uh, the, uh, the meeting room conversations that we have, uh, the difference of opinion and thoughts that create a better solution that we have. And then comes, comes the final piece, which is customer satisfaction. All of that recipe is actually working for Team One Asia today. And we are doing a fantastic job, not only on increasing the headcount, uh, increasing our innovations, but our customers are also happy with us. Uh, that was on statistics. Uh, Ashwini, if we can go to next. Yeah. So probably this is this is a slide which uh, everyone awaits. What technologies that you uh, actually support? So we have tried dividing it into, if you remember the circle image that we had earlier, I've tried dividing uh, the entire technology uh, uh, landscape that we have across uh, those circles, specifically applications, uh, partner business solutions, infrastructure, and then the others. Uh, applications, yeah, I mean, we do support, uh, we do use Java today, we do use PostgreSQL today, we, we do use C, C++ today. Uh, we, we, we actually work on RPA today using UiPath. Uh, our AI team uses Python libraries. Uh, we have Ansible as our automation uh, scripting language. Uh, Oracle database, certainly. Oracle FlexCube is something which is banking industry specific. It's a banking industry solution that we actually work in. Uh, TFS now and uh, O365, Windows O365 are out there. But obviously, since, since applications also covers the uh, cloud part of it, uh, Azure and AWS is there. If you look on partner business solutions, the entire SAP landscape is there. Now, SAP, I think, has, has actually uh, had a, a, a major shift where S4 HANA is now introduced. Uh, we also have SNP, by the way, on which we work. Uh, then there is the, the not only the ABAPers, but we also have the Fiori people with us. Uh, we also have the cloud platform for SAP, which is SAP on Azure. Uh, but obviously, our models not only include the project models, but have shared services for uh, the entire SAP uh, thing. We also have the Oracle Enterprise applications in this. On infra side, we have the system health monitoring tools, performance tracking tools. We have our storage tools, uh, directory services, disk administration, disaster recovery areas. Uh, sir, but obviously, since it's infra, uh, it also has uh, antivirus administration tools that we do for our customers. Uh, last but not the least, we have our transition services because we actually deal into uh, multi-hundred people solutions which are transitioned to GDCs. So there are transition-specific frameworks that we have developed in-house. Uh, there are transition-specific tools that we have developed in-house uh, over and above the standard tools. Uh, we certainly have, I mean, we cannot do away with testing services. I mean, Japan being a uh, uh, a quality specific, quality sensitive market. Uh, we have uh, testing services and testing services are uh, not only testing projects, but we also have our standard development projects which are followed by uh, the testing cycles, which certainly include the unit part of it, the system part of it, acceptance, and for that matter, the performance part of it as well. We also have Salesforce and Lovia uh, that we support out of India GDC uh, and One Asia team today. So that is that is a landscape. Probably uh, more common tools, more common uh, scripting languages that we otherwise talk of. 
and it it's it is actually wide and growing as we are going up show the next slide okay so now now coming to coming to the japanese bilingual roles as we call them uh i mean it is it is put down here but let me take everyone a step back and uh, talk more on to this bilingual roles or the uh, the japanese part of it so uh, if you look at any project i think the project is composed of uh, the the domain into which it is it could be a financial domain it could be a healthcare domain it could be some other domain uh, we we will use a ready made uh, solution something like a sap there or a microsoft dynamics there or we may also be asked to actually use java as a solution uh, the free the free tools that we have are there so uh, probably the initial uh, solutioning part in which uh, the customer need is actually transformed into what is what can be a solution uh, could go anyway and uh, language basically is just a part of it because uh language enables everyone to probably if there is a team which is sitting out of japan and trying to create a solution say for one of the biggest telecom company in japan then probably they'll have to talk the local language in japan to interact with them to understand what do they really want to propose solutions to them but uh language uh, at the end would again be just a medium of communication uh that solution that the that fujitsu bring in or the software industry brings in uh is not only the linguistic part of it but is also the technology part of it so you cannot you cannot just have a solution where you can talk japanese but uh there is also that dependence on technology part of it so we always like to put at put these two major areas of language and technology as probably you can consider they are probably two wheels of a bicycle or a two wheeler that you use i mean you cannot ride a bicycle you cannot ride a two wheeler with only one wheel i mean similarly you cannot give a solution only basis japanese and in japan market you cannot give a solution only because you know technology you should be somebody who is better or probably best at both best at language and best at technology as well. and that you if that you is fujitsu today what is fujitsu fujitsu is basically people like me and ashwini and others on this call who make up the company so if fujitsu is asked to be somebody who is good at japanese and good at technology that means probably i and ashwini and others are good at japanese and good at technology so language is just one part of it but technology is other part of it uh, which actually make up a complete circle make up a complete environment for us so all these roles that we have today sorry give me a minute so all these roles that we have today basically are not only linguistic roles but they touch the technology angle so if you even if you look at the translator that we have today the the linguistic part is just the 70% but the technology part is 30% so what is this technology part probably you may be very good at japanese but if you don't understand the common acronyms the common short forms that are used in the domain for which you are translating probably you may go wrong so that technology angle should come in you should understand what is the document that you are translating if the document is about a healthcare domain then your words will have to be specific to healthcare do you will have to understand what the healthcare domain actually does how does it work uh, what are the specific parameters of healthcare domain do? so all that is a tech, tech part of it i mean tech part of it is just not uh, uh, c c++ or anything else but it is also the domain part of it. and as i said uh, i mean you cannot you cannot have only one wheel to drive a two uh, a, a bicycle you need both the wheels so we want each one of our employees also to concentrate not only on language part of it but the technology part of it. similarly if you look at other roles like uh, bsc which otherwise we call as bridge engineer bridge engineer is something who actually stands in every project between the gdc part uh, and the uh, japanese customer or the japanese office he is responsible for actually converting what japan wants to something that is understood by the team here now uh, again there you cannot just stand there and convert what a japanese person is uh, talking all about in japanese and converting it to, into english you will you should be able to tell them uh, the technological needs that a customer has if you are unable to do that probably the india team or the gdc team will end up creating something which is 
which is not what the customer wants. So again, uh, there is a dependence on technology there. You should be able to understand. And we know that, I mean, not everyone, you know, uh, comes with both language and technology background. So when people actually join us uh, as freshers, we ensure that they go through a, a rigorous six month program in which we cover the Japanese part of it and we cover the technology part of it as well to get them to the need uh, that is the need of one Asia or the need of Fujitsu. Uh, laterals who are experienced people who come in probably either come in on technology or language. And then we have a, a wide variety of uh, training, uh, I should not say material, but training sites and training avenues available with us through which we ask them to go and then transform themselves into something that is the need of the road. Uh, even our developers, uh, our developers are not only technology people, but they are somebody who also know the language. Uh, some, somebody like me, I have, I have been a programmer earlier than I uh, uh, was an architect, then I moved into managerial role and today I am a business owner. Uh, we have, I have crossed the entire journey. So some of our developers are onto, the, on, onto a very similar time cycle, uh, probably 10 years down the line, there will, they will be where I am today. Now, uh, similarly, our BPS engineers and infra engineers as well. They are not only language people; they are technology people as well. Uh, uh, a simple example is all the coffee chains that we go on and have our coffee. There is there is a lot of processing that happens beyond that. There is an entire team which is actually looking at the hardware part of uh, uh, the entire coffee chain that is managed. Now, that coffee chain hardware part that is getting managed actually is put up as uh, say uh, 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 images onto onto the machines that are being controlled by our MIS engineers. So they should understand what it takes onto a switch or what it takes onto a hub. They should have the technology understanding of when to understand the hub or a, or a switch has gone wrong. So technology is everywhere, language is everywhere. I mean, it it is a necessity that everyone should have a proportion of both depending on the uh, uh, the role that he is performing. So uh, if you look at each of this, each of this will have a language, each of this will have a technology. Uh, as you, as you, I mean, there are some roles which are not put here, which are managerial roles and business roles. They are somebody, uh, the, the people there are somebody who have probably tens of twenties of years of experience, go, have gone through all of this. And then they are sitting there uh, overseeing the entire uh, project or the business uh, vertical that they manage. Uh, that's that, uh, uh, and I think uh, 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 my, my fellow panelists at the end would also cover uh, some of the op open opportunities that we have today within Fujitsu, within Team One Asia. Uh, they'll be based more or less on uh, on this part of. It. Ashwini, is there a subsequent slide? Yeah. Okay. So with that, uh, I think we we have covered uh, most of the part. Uh, that we want to talk, uh, uh, Anuja, uh, back to you uh, for subsequent part. Yes, thank you so much, Prashant San, Ashwini San, for your uh, very detailed, uh, very thorough, uh, and very clear presentation. Uh, I think that must have given our audience a good idea about uh, Fujitsu's work ethic, your commitment to sustainability, your vision, the services that Fujitsu offers, um, your, the key technology that you use, projects, um, you know, the global delivery uh, center. Uh, and I think also they've got an idea about uh, what kinds of tools uh, they need to know about uh, cloud tech, scripting languages, and so on. And towards the end, you also addressed what kind of bilingual roles um, are available at uh, Fujitsu for people to apply for. So the linguistic angle, the technical angle, the domain specific knowledge that they need. So I think it was extremely thorough. So thank you so much. Uh, um, so uh, on that note, um, I'd already posted in the chat I had mentioned, but uh, if anyone has questions, there have already been some questions in the Q&A uh, section, but if you haven't already posted, you can post your question in the Q&A. And um, I'm just I'm going to uh, start uh, bringing up some of the questions and addressing uh, them to the panelists, and then they can enlighten us uh, to give us a little bit more uh, detail on those things. Uh, before I get into the question and answer, though, um, the panelists had also mentioned that there are a few 
job openings at the moment at uh, Fujitsu. And um, these are, you can find them through the Hayakawa portal as well. So I thought I would just quickly share my screen and uh, share with the audience where they could find this through the Hayakawa portal. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to take a second to share my screen. I hope the Hayakawa website is visible to everyone. Is it visible? Yes. Yes. Oh, great. Thank you. Uh, so this is the main Hayakawa website. You just have to type hayakawa.in and you will be able to find this. Uh, on the top of the screen, there was an event that happened earlier this year. So you're going to see that. Uh, so everybody who's attending, you're welcome to scroll down and towards the bottom part, you will see work in Japan, uh, study in Japan, all of these options, and you can always read more. And in the current job uh, for job postings, you will find the Fujitsu job. So if you click there, you're going to be able to move to the next uh, pages where you can find the roles that are currently, uh, you know, uh, there have are openings at uh, Fujitsu. So again, you can click in to find more information about those roles and then apply uh, over here through the portal. So this is for uh, the students to uh, get an idea of how they can apply. And you can also find more information about these roles over here. If the panelists would like to add something really quickly about these roles, or I think it might have been covered in your presentation also. So, so we can go through some of the details of those. I can see some questions coming in where people have said that they don't mm -hmm. have technology background, but they know right. Japanese. So do they have any opportunities? Definitely they have opportunities. So we just saw one role that business support uh, engineer is one uh, translator. You need not have uh, a deep knowledge of technology, but uh, if you are working as translator, interpreter, bridge support engineer for a project, uh, the project will give you all that uh, glossary uh, terminology related knowledge. They will show you how they work and that will help you to do that interpretation translation. So it need not be a very uh, deeper understanding of technology, but some terminology related to the domain and that project is known, uh, that is sufficient. One more role is a business process engineer. So Prashant San also explained about business process engineer role. Uh, where uh, we have uh, business processes. So I can give you some examples. So Fujitsu uh, manufactures hardware and uh, many customers order for a hardware. It could be PC, it could be server, it could be hard disk, uh, it could be uh, mobile phone, many, many uh, network equipment, many things are there. And if order comes, it can come through email, it can come through a web portal and all that order processing happens. And finally, the uh, hardware gets shipped to the customer. So this entire process in between is done in Japanese and we have teams over here who work with Japan and they do all this business processing. So it is getting the order, checking the order, checking the uh, calculations, doing some data entry and then uh, uh, giving back it to the customers. So you don't need very thorough technology knowledge over here, but if your Japanese is excellent, I'm sure you will be able to do that job uh, without any problems. So there are roles uh, for people who do not have uh, technology knowledge. If you are even com computer literate, then also it is fine. And if you enter the company, if you get opportunity, we also give the required uh, technology trainings. Uh, so just wanted to clarify that because I saw some questions uh, on that. Hi, so there were quite a few questions. Um, a lot of them were concerned about whether an IT background is necessary um, and uh, what do people do if they don't have a technical background? So I think the idea is they can look for opportunities and that some training would be provided. Um, and uh, they do, of course, depending on the type of role, need some minimal knowledge about the uh, technical aspects uh, of that particular domain or field. Um, there are also some questions about the uh, Basic eligibility criteria. Is there anything you're specifically looking for uh, that the audience should know about? Um, and of course, if there are job opportunities for freshers who are just fresh out of their BTEC or MTEC courses uh, and otherwise. Uh, Ashwini, should, uh, should I answer that? Okay, so uh, yeah, I mean, I talked about the technology part of it, uh, but we understand that technology 
I mean, there has to be a learning curve towards it. Uh, we, we, although we want people who are uh, bilingual speakers and techno technocrats at the same time, uh, it takes time to get there. Uh, I think everyone has gone through that Japanese angle where probably they go through that N5 and N4 and subsequent ones. And probably uh, when you reach that N2 level, probably you get that confidence of top, talking. And technology is a very similar thing. Although uh, you may know Java probably, the Java that is needed uh, or the C or the C++ or for that matter, any technology that is needed uh, will have its learning curve. Uh, at Fujitsu, what we do is probably we divide people who are brought into the system uh, vis a vis the experience that they have. So, probably if somebody is a fresher today, he would be put on, into a batch which is a fresher batch. And then, fresher actually, they go through an entire six month, uh, three to six months process in which they actually uh, go through the Japanese language learning or go through the technology or go through both. And at the end of it, uh, they get a skilled technology or a skilled uh, Japanese language. Uh, converse to this, if you have somebody who is an experienced person today, uh, when we say he's experienced, he's experienced either into the language part of it or the technology part of it. That is somewhere uh, where we categorize him as an experienced person and he comes into a higher roles for us. Uh, he comes in with working experience, say, on translation earlier, on being an interpreter earlier, or being a bridge engineer earlier. And he comes into Fujitsu, starts doing that role and whatever is there as a learning curve for him, maybe the systems in Fujitsu, the technologies in Fujitsu, we provide him that knowledge. So it depends and uh, it depends on where you fit. So freshers will certainly fit the freshers part of it uh, and experienced people will come in at higher low, uh, roles, but training will be there. I mean, throughout the software life cycle, I mean, it, it never ends. It never ceases to end and probably uh, looking at uh, advancement in technologies, probably every new year, uh, everyone has to learn a new technology. So that will continue. Oh, great. That's a good point, though. Uh, I think we're advancing so rapidly uh, in the, that it's really unbelievable how fast um, new technology is coming up. So um, I think that must have answered a lot of the questions about Fresher's roles. Um, some of them are also asking about the interview process, uh, application process in specific, is there anything you'd like to share about that? And what kind of resume you might be looking for? Ashwin, you want to take that? Sure, uh, so I will address fresher uh, queries because there are questions on eligibility criteria uh, for freshers. So freshers, you should have a graduation degree, which need not be engineering degree or uh, uh, technology related computer science degree. Uh, so computer science engineering graduates are also absorbed. Uh, and if you know Japanese, uh, that will be, I'm sure, icing on the cake. And if you do not have engineering or technology degree, if you come with uh, arts background or if you come with commerce background, that is also a good if you come with uh, any other uh, BAC kind of background. We do take uh, freshers uh, and that too with bilingual skill. We definitely take them, we absorb them and uh, they have to go through interview process, of course. And uh, based on that, the selection happens then uh, depending on their interest, depending on their um, uh, level of Japanese and also uh, some, as I said, uh, computer related background, they are put in different trainings. And after that, uh, we put them on the projects. And for the lateral joinees, then we have a number of opportunities available, uh, as Prashant San explained that uh, in which domains we work, in which areas we work. So we have opportunities for uh, developers, we have opportunities for QA testers, for uh, uh, people knowing Japanese, but uh, some knowledge of computers, then we do have uh, support projects for them. We do data center management as part of our multi-cloud services. So we do need Japanese bilinguals uh, uh, who are given some documents and they they do uh, some technical uh, tasks definitely for that um, we choose them and other roles as business uh, support, uh, bilingual support engineers, translators, interpreters, and also business process engineers. Uh, somebody had a question that what are the opportunities in Chennai, uh, Prashant Sam, you may want to take it up. Sure. Uh, so 
I think uh, I, I I would repeat uh, so Pune and Chennai are our for Team One Asia are our biggest centers. Probably uh, at the start of this year they were fifty fifty, and now uh, we also have a Bangalore. We have Bangalore as our upcoming center. If we talk specifically about Chennai, uh, we have application services projects there. We have infrastructure projects there. We have cloud projects there. Uh, opportunity, if you look at it from a from a technology perspective, particularly we have Java projects, we have C projects, uh, we have monitoring projects, we have some of the infra projects that Ashwini was mentioning working out of Chennai. Uh, we also have something that we call as a ODC, uh, which is a dedicated area uh, in which we actually work for a specific customer. So we have certain ODCs that are set out for our Japanese customers out of Chennai. Uh, Chennai probably covers the entire landscape of uh, uh, solutions and domains that we offer. So uh, be it Pune, be it Chennai, I think uh, there is scope and opportunity for everything that I, that we had put out in our uh, uh, slides of technology and domain. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much for taking that question as well. Um, on that note, is there a um, are, there are also some questions about job opportunities in Japan directly? Uh, could you shed some light on that? Should you want to take that, or should I touch it? It's job opportunities in Japan, right? Yes, yes, yes. So there are questions on that as well. So uh, as I said, we do take freshers. We do take. Uh, lateral joinees and put them on the projects. We also have some programs where we uh, do OJT. OJT is nothing but on-the-job training. So on-the-job training in Japan, those kind of programs are also available. And uh, we do have uh, some people who will be going to Japan work there on the projects and they will come back and then impart that knowledge here. So there are such programs as well through which uh, people will get to go to Japan. I know somebody who learns Japanese is always a dream to see that society, how the culture is in Japan and visit Japan. So we do have such programs. Okay, great. Um, so I think both about Chennai and Japan, I think there's a little bit of clarity now. Uh, is there anything you'd like to share about the specific process of application? So I think those who are interested uh, can uh, directly contact me, uh, Prashant, on our LinkedIn's, and then we'll get connected with them. They can uh, share their uh, resumes with us, even through Hayakawa, right? You have already published uh, uh, job roles and requirements. So uh, I think Anuja San, through your site as well, they can give us uh, resumes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I will share the you. LinkedIn um, links uh, with the uh, audience uh, after at the end of the uh, Q&A session, and they can also uh, reach out to you if they're applying. Um, there were several questions about the level of um, Japanese uh, language knowledge um, that you're expecting for applicants. So like a JLPT level um, that you have as your expectation, anything like that? So we do take people uh, with N5, N4 uh, level as well, then we do give them advanced training. Uh, somebody comes with uh, N3 and above, then typically uh, will not need much uh, language training, but uh, we give them project and account related training, domain related training, wherever required, and they can be absorbed on the projects immediately. Prashant, you okay. want to add? Uh... So I think, uh... To begin with, if you are a fresher, we understand it will be N5, N4. Freshers go through that N3 batch. and uh, But obviously, I mean, N5 does not make you a fresher. Probably there are other tests that are done, basis which if you get selected, they push you to N4, they push you to N3. N3 is a level which is generally accepted as a workable level or a working level for all the projects. Post that, uh, we do, but I mean, N3 is not the end. We do need people who are N2 and N1 as well, who are uh, excellent speakers for our bridge roles, uh, who are excellent speakers with technology for our uh, managerial roles as well. So we need every level of people for freshers. We give them that opportunity of going through training. For laterals, since they are laterals and experience, we expect them to uh, come with that, those linguistic skills or technology skills. So will be open for everything. Uh, it's just that uh, uh, there are there are certain tests and exams and criteria 
that everyone has to clarify before getting uh, into projects. Excellent. Okay. So um, it depends. Uh, their level uh, would, of course, um, also be a part of a component of what they apply for in addition to other things that you would test and kind of check to see where they could be placed. And I think that probably makes a lot of sense for everyone. Um, there's also a question about short-term internship opportunities. Uh, do you have anything of that sort? Uh, for Team One Asia, sorry, we, we, we do not have very active internship program. Uh, but our fresher program is very active, <laughs> to be very true to you. Uh, uh, we, we believe in training them and then accepting them into Fujitsu. Uh, not, not, a, not a very uh, structured or a very big internship program for us. Okay, great. And I think you had shared with us the attrition rates and things like that. And I think a lot of people like to stay in that work environment for long term. So I think that's very nice too. Um, there were some questions about opportunities in other um, backgrounds, like legal or uh, front-end development, mechanical engineering, industrial automation engineering, things like that. Um, do you have anything to share about other fields outside of uh, the IT-related ones that you spoke about? Uh, definitely. As I said, if they have some different background, uh, especially for legal and uh, automobile uh, manufacturing, I would say that definitely there are opportunities uh, which could be in business process services or which could be in the uh, data center management services uh, where we do some manual based work, uh, manual in the sense documents uh, which are called as uh, uh, SOPs or the uh, Overall, uh, what should I say that documentation, how to do certain uh, technology tasks that documentation is given and based on that people can perform uh, and do their work. So uh, there are uh, definitely opportunities available for somebody with that background and uh, good Japanese skills. Okay, great. So it's not limited only to IT. So um, there were quite a few questions like telecom background. Um, yes. Uh, those kinds of UI UX, um, so they should also feel uh, they that they could apply and uh, look for an opportunity. Yes, UI UX very specialized area, and uh, definitely we would like to hear from uh, people with those skills. Okay, great, excellent. Um, I think there was also a question about um, how Fujitsu is doing in the AI domain and its scope in the future of the AI domain. Would you like to comment on that? Sure. So uh, I cannot name out uh, the customers today, but uh, uh, AI is something that has been with us uh, for the probably past two and a half, three years. Uh, we have certain accounts which are very specifically working with their customers from uh, Japan and other regions. What we are probably doing today is working on videos and images. Uh, those videos and images could be feeds or specific uh, feeds, uh, feeds either from the surveillance cameras or feeds uh, uh, specifically take, taken by a car actually traveling across. Uh, we identify certain objects for our uh, end customers through those images and through those videos, uh, which are actually probably their own assets today uh, it could be something that is of interest to them today. It could actually help them uh, put up a asset control for themselves, put up uh, uh, problematic zones, problematic areas for themselves, could also uh, look at potential problems for them. Uh, so we, we actually, as an AI part, are working on to uh, those solutions specifically right now. Okay, uh, I hope that answer. I'm unfortunately here. Uh... It's not uh, my field, so I can't comment. So I hope that answered uh, the audience's question there. Um, there was an, um, a question about any opportunities in Hyderabad. So I know you had mentioned Pune and Chennai earlier, but uh, what about other cities in India? Uh, any other hubs where you're looking to recruit, where you're, you have a strong presence? Sure, you want to take that? So as Team One Asia, we are primarily focused on Pune, Chennai, and Bangalore. Uh, so we are also having a significant number of uh, engineers uh, 
or bilinguals in Bangalore, and we are also uh, hiding over there. Okay, great. So there are uh, no immediate opportunities in Hyderabad uh, because our focus is on these three locations. But in future, we may uh, definitely have more locations. Okay. Okay, great. Um, there was also a question about whether JLPT certification is necessary for um, Japanese, like, for example, somebody who may be proficient in speaking or communicating in Japanese, but may not have that certification. Um, so do you have any requirement as far as that is concerned? Yes, definitely. Somebody can be assessed uh, is at what uh, Japanese language level, but it's always good to have that certification. Right. <laughs> I understand. Uh, I think the person who had asked mentioned that they didn't have access like to attend the exam anywhere near where they live. There were no centers. So uh, I think that's where that question came from. Um, but I think, of course, um, a large population probably will try to get certification where they can. Um, but I think since you also provide training, I think you might be open to someone applying and then being assessed um, I'll just take a look and see what other kinds of questions there are. Uh, there were a couple of questions about your SAP practice. Is there anything you'd like to share about that? Oh, sorry, can you can you read out the question, Anuja, for me? I am not there. Uh, so it says, please provide more insights on your SAP practice. Unfortunately, I don't have more information here to uh, uh, understand exactly what the probably a very very open question so uh, I'll, I'll try to try to cover all bases here so sap practice today for us uh, actually covers all the bases uh, it has a uh, maintenance uh, services or the ams services uh, practice that we have uh, we have the shared service model uh, we also have the development model which is uh, the scripting model as they call out in fiori and abap uh, we have some conversion projects in which the uh, uh, older versions of uh, SAP are getting converted into the newer versions using S4 HANA SNP like tools. Uh, we we also have some consulting services which have newly started in which uh, the work is on SAP consulting rather than uh, working on a specific ABAP or a specific uh, 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 SD or MM module. Uh, so if you look at at the SAP landscape, probably we 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 are covering most of the uh, part. I'm, I'm, I'm very, it's very difficult question because it is so open-ended. Uh, I've tried to cover whatever we do. If there are specific ones, yeah, I mean, you put it down and we'll try to answer. Uh, yes, I hope if someone else has a more deep, more specific question, they would put it up. Because there was another question about openings for SAP functional consultants. Do you have any such openings? Sure. Uh, we, we are actually looking at functional consultants to work in the consulting domain. Uh, we have an arm with, of SAP within us who does it for Japan. If there are bilingual functional consultants, why not? Uh, there are functional consultants uh, who are who who actually should have consulting specific uh, experience of five years or more, preferably eight years and uh, Japanese knowledge. Now, this is only the consulting experience. I'm sure consulting experience comes with the development. So. What we see is people who are 15 years into SAP have five to eight years of consulting experience. Plus Japanese is like a icing on cake, uh, surely open for those. Great. Um, I think, yeah, I hope that answered uh, the question there. Um, uh, going back to the JLPT qualification, I, I missed this earlier, but since we were talking about it, um, I think someone raised a question about whether NAT is also considered. So is it only JLPT or other exams also all right? JLPT and NAT both are considered. So uh, yes, both we consider as equivalent. So somebody Excellent. with NAT certification can also apply. Great. So um, I think since NAT is conducted with a slightly more <laughs> frequency than JLPT, it also um, helps a lot of others consider that. Uh, Anusha, in the meantime, just a, mm -hmm. a piece of information I was checking with the support team. Uh, my support team tells me that there is a specific email address that is shared with Hayakawa team. If not, I'll ask them to reshare it. 
mm-hmm. I would request that resumes be spent sent out there so that you know we have a central storage, easier way of responding to people. Uh, our recruitment team will be associated with those addresses. Uh, okay. It, it will be. I'll, I'll ask the support team to probably give it to Chentil San or Shimizu San once again. Okay, great. Um, so if I, I I would I would love to share that with the audience when we have the ID. Um, I also have to still share the uh, LinkedIn profiles. Um, so I'll do that towards the end. We still have a few more minutes, uh, if it's all right, for a couple more questions. There were a few questions about salary packages. Is that something um, you'd be open to, I mean, uh, discussing or sharing some information about? I mean, again, a very open question. Who doesn't want better of it? Even I want it. So, but... Uh, <laughs> Good point, yes. Uh, I mean, it is very difficult to answer how much salary do we do we give. I think uh, we are we we, a, we stand at the, mark. Uh-huh, I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of the questions were from a freshers' point of views because I think a lot of them are college students who are attending. So yeah. maybe for that audience, I can I can give you two inputs here. Uh, 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 instead of being very specific on numbers, because uh, see, every software industry today has uh, probably to exist in the system needs to have very competitive salaries, be it a fresher level or be it a any level. Uh, Fujitsu India uh, is there, let me assure you that. Even at fresher level, our salaries are part, at par with uh, the big fives of the industry today. Uh, something that is very specific to probably Fujitsu, which is not a common practice elsewhere is, we also reward our people with additional allowances once they actually cover their uh, JLPT. So based on whether you are a JLPT 3, JLPT 4, or a NAT 3, or a NAT 2, you get additional allowances over and above your salary uh, as you qualify and certify uh, those Japanese levels. So probably that is where, that is something that is a, a distinctive part uh, from salaries which I've seen in other, other uh, organizations. Okay, great. Uh, I hope that gave some of the freshers some clarity. Um, because I think it's, as you say, more than specific numbers, it's also a matter of long-term uh, growth uh, in a particular um, employment opportunity. Um, I think I've covered most of the questions. Um, so uh, yeah, most of them are about uh, certification and their career uh, like qualifications and things like that and opportunities for different um, fields. And I think you've also mentioned that you're open to uh, applicants from all kinds of fields. So I think we've covered this. There is a question about visa sponsorship for jobs, say like in Japan, I suppose, if they were to get uh, uh, located there. Is there any input you can share on that? Oh. I'm not very sure on visa sponsorship. So the way it works for us is uh, if we have a customer in Japan who is asking for people from GDCs to be placed at his site for a particular period of time or for that matter, even longer duration, uh, those kind of visas for our employees are certainly sponsored by Fujitsu uh, India, supported by Fujitsu Japan. Uh, and uh, that that thing works as as normal as a business works. So if that is the visa sponsorship, yeah, we have it for our employees. Uh, we have it for people who visit short term and long term to Japan. Not only to Japan, to to probably any part of the world uh, when the customer uh, where, wherever there is a customer need and ask. Is is that the answer, or are we looking at something else? Um, I. I suppose because the question was rather broad, so I'm not entirely sure what they had in mind, but I hope that would have answered uh, what they were looking for. There is a kind of unique question here about um, roles for like this person is a credit analyst in the mortgage industry. And if you have opportunities for that kind of field. Specifically, that field I have not have not seen. We 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 do not have. Uh, I know I know in India there are a lot of banks and financial organizations who have back offices certainly doing some part of credit analysis, but we do not have that. We have more of software services for our banks, uh, development and support both. 
Uh, Ashwini, if you have heard of any BPS processes particularly doing this, probably you can add to this. Not on this, but as you said, uh, somebody with this knowledge can uh, work as a bridge support uh, or functional consultant for uh, financial projects. Okay, um, I think it's not exactly very specifically uh, aligned with uh, your roles at Fujitsu, so I'm not sure. It, it felt like a very unique question, but I just wanted to uh, see if there was an answer for that um, that we could get. Uh, one thing here I would uh, like to say is that it may not be the exact match if you are working in some different field, but if you are ready to learn other skills, ready to learn some other domain, uh, maybe technology and uh, software testing, uh, business processes, data center management, kind of manage infrastructure projects with some uh, technology or some training. If you're open to that, definitely, why not? Uh, we can definitely consider such. Okay, yeah. great. So if they're looking to switch uh, over from a different career or if they've had like a career gap or something like that, you're also open to applicants from this kind of uh, background? Right. Great. Uh, I think there was just a question about that as well, um, because there was somebody who'd had a technology, uh, an IT background, and then they'd taken a break, and now they're learning Japanese, and they're wondering if, you know, a, a gap in their resume would be a problem. I hope uh, that answers their question. So in such um, cases, relevant experience is considered, and I, I don't see any problem if there is a gap, but relevant experience has to be considered. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, yes, there were two or three questions on that, uh, and I think we've covered that. So great. Um, there, I think we've covered most of the current uh, questions. Um, I'll just take a quick break here to um, share the email ID uh, that uh, had come over from uh, Fujitsu earlier to the uh, attendees. So attendees, if you're interested in sending in your resumes or making inquiries, you can email careers.india at fujitsu.com. And please make sure your subject is Gateway to Fujitsu at Hayakawa 2022. This is the name of today's event. You can find it in the Hayakawa webpage if you uh, miss it. I will also post it in the chat, but um, in case you're watching from YouTube or something like that, uh, I'll just uh, announce it one more time. Careers.india at fujitsu.com. So C A R E E R S dot I N D I A at F U J I T S U dot C O M. So this is the email ID, and make sure your subject is Gateway to Fujitsu at Hayakawa 2022. I'm just going to take a second to post this in the chat. Uh, if there's anything else the panelists would like to share in the meantime, I think we covered most of the questions. Uh, uh, one last, probably Anujasan, if you allow me, there was a question on analytics tools which are used. Oh, I'm so sorry, I missed that. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, so somebody has asked a question which tools we are using, uh, Tableau, Click, yes, we are using these tools, also using Power BI uh, and many more tools. So definitely, if you have experience in that and you know Japanese, there are opportunities. Oh, excellent. Oh, the, the, there was a question about uh, analytics tools. I completely missed. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Ashwini San. Uh, I think the um, Hayakawa uh, link, as well as the email ID and the subject titles have been posted in the Zoom chat for anyone uh, who's interested in the uh, attendee group. Um, also, I'm just going to take a second to share some links that um, uh, on behalf of the Fujitsu uh, panelists, um, here is a link to a video about um, uh, Fujitsu's uh, UVANCE uh, project. Um, and so uh, please, uh, you can take a look to understand more. And I'm also sharing in the chat the LinkedIn profiles of Ashwini-san and Prashant-san. So uh, once again, uh, to the audience, you can follow them and uh, reach out. Please do send in your uh, resumes or inquiries to the email IDs. However, I think that way it's a bit more streamlined 
for them to follow up. Um, I think we've, we've reached, it's 8.20, so I think now it's a good time to uh, uh, wrap up and uh, uh, close the session. Um, so uh, before we uh, proceed, um, I think we could just take one more uh, snapshot of everybody here. I think we could all just open our videos and smile for uh, just to commemorate the uh, event. Um, the other panelists are welcome to join us, please. Hi. Um, san would you like to also? Uh, no, I'm clicking pictures. I would request everyone, please smile as bright as you can. And I'm going to click a picture right away. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, I have got it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, so um, on that note, uh, I think we've had a very interesting uh, session. A lot of detail. I, I think we've answered a lot of questions and I hope uh, that the attendees uh, reach out and we have an interesting future ahead with uh, Fujitsu and uh, India relations. Um, uh, I also think that uh, a lot of the audience can think about the kinds of bilingual roles you can play, the, the way our career can expand when we learn another language and how we can tap into another culture, which is such a beautiful experience. Um, I'd like to thank, uh, very deeply thank um, the panelists, uh, Ashwini San, Tashan San, the uh, other uh, uh, everyone else from uh, Fujitsu who has joined us and has uh, kept in touch and made this event happen. Sriram san, Vitali san, Shpanan san, uh, everybody. And of course, uh, the team at Hayakawa. And, uh, and I have to thank, of course, the attendees, the audience that came for this event uh, and made it happen. Uh, and I think, uh, as Prashant san was saying earlier, the strength that we have at India, I think, is our youth, uh, is uh, the next generation. And we have to carry it forward. And uh, I think that's a very important takeaway from today. And I think that that's the energy of this evening's event. So that's fantastic. So once again, to everybody here, thank you so much. Arigato um, We look forward to more events and uh, for uh, our relations to keep deepening and becoming more meaningful. Thank you so much. Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you very much. Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you so much for, for this. Arigato gozaimashita. Great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is, is there any, anyone uh, have any other points? And then I think we can close the uh, event very timely. I think in very good Japanese fashion. Thank you for attending.